Hello. Um, <clears throat> today I uh, saw the disaster artists, which were based off of this book by Greg Sestero and John Bison. Uh, if you don't know what that is, uh, the disaster artist, it's about the making of The Room, which is described often as the best worst movie ever made. Uh, it's a huge cult movie, and um, it's been playing in theaters since 2003. It's been... It's a huge thing. It's really... It's really something. That, um, some could call the phenomenon... I think one says it's like Star Wars, yet not so, and yet not at the same time. Like the phenomenon is huge. Like I guess you could say, like Star Wars, it's like it's so bad it's good. Um, and the book and the movie, you know, Greg is uh, he's an inspiring actor, as is Tommy. Tommy, played by uh, James Franco, who directs and produces the film. Dave, his brother, plays Greg. And Greg and Tommy are in the movie. Um, Greg is the casting director in the film. I didn't really recognize him because I was so into the movie. I just didn't really see him. Though, you, if you want to see Tommy... In the movie, you have to wa wait for the entire credits to end to, to see it. To see it, and it's it's a very funny, interesting moment. Uh, sort of like a Marvel uh, moment, how they have an ending, like something at the very end, like a last scene. Uh, sort of like that, but you know. The movie takes a lot of liberties. It does take liberties from what happened with the book. Uh, like one, I will say, is at the very end, which could be seen as a spoiler alert. Maybe not. Uh, if you haven't read the book, or you have no idea about the story of the room. Which, you, c you can get the audio book, um, which I have as well. Um, Either way, it's a very interesting story, just regardless, and, you know, it, basically it ends with, like, there's a this huge crowd, but reality was, uh, the crowd, many people got up and left the theater, and yeah, people did laugh at the movie. Uh, because the thing is, the room is supposed to be a serious m drama. Tommy Wiseau f saw it as like a Tennessee Williams type film, like a kind of like streetcar named Desire. And basically, his acting was that of a Brando, James Dean type quality. Um, you know? And. Yeah, it, 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 no. And, and I get why the movie didn't play it out as it did, because the thing is, this guy, when he's making the film, he can be an ass. You know, he can be a tool. He, he, which many people do. Like, you know, people are like, oh, Stanley Kubrick was, at times he was very hard and very difficult to work with. I say at times because some t some actors, if you really liked you, you were treated well. But if not so much, or whatever, it might not be a completely happy experience. Alfred Hitchcock, you know, he he wasn't the easiest director either. Like The Birds, he put his actors in rooms with birds, real birds, and had them fly around at them. And may even say that in the movie too. Um, 
So basically, like, you know, Tony Wiseau is like, oh, he's a bit of a jerk when working with him. He wants a certain way. People aren't, don't get what he's doing. Kind of challenging him when he doesn't want there to be any challenge or questions on this or that. And he, he gets frustrated. It, or frustrated it. it not word, but you know, he gets angry or upset or whatever, and he you know, kind of loses it. But you know, when seeing this and even reading and listening to the audiobook of this, the dude really he put a whole lot of work into this, he put six million dollars into this, and then people laugh when. And seeing this movie, he thought was completely serious. He always saw it and intended it to be. And while in the movie, it wasn't, as I've said, it wasn't exactly like how it happened. Like the cult phenomenon slowly became what it is now. It wasn't like this huge packed theater. Or if it was, well, in a way it was, because it said, like, Tommy paid people to show up, aside from the, from the actors and crew members that were there. And that some of the things with the crew members, many were fired and replaced, hence why the six million dollars uh, thing, because they kept billing sets, replacing actors, replacing crew members, and all of this. You know, but when watching the movie, I understand why it's, it's done to kind of have a more happy, positive note. Because Tommy was very upset with how it happened with all this, and I'm sure, you know, Greg being like, you know, "Hey, look, it's it's gonna be okay." Like, you know, people like it; they're, they're enjoying themselves. At least, maybe they don't necessarily like it, but they're enjoying themselves. They're laughing. They. You, you made something that people respond to. And Greg was like, he was there for him. It might not have happened, transpired exactly how in the movie, but that's kind of how he's often described it in the book and in interviews. Like, you know, and Tommy did see that, that people enjoy his movie. Not how he intended, but. It, they enjoy it, and um, the performances by the Franco brothers are amazing. James, you know, directed this and produced it. He did a good job of it. Uh, he did a great performance. Dave was also he was very good. You know, he, you know, like everybody was believable, um, and. This is a very inspiring story, too. It's very motivational. Sure, at times, you know, Tommy can be a bit aggravating because of the situations, but I believe at the end, he, he means well. Like, he wanted to make a movie to entertain and to, like, speak to some people. It does speak to people in a way, because people have now analyzed it, this movie a lot and it's and just the story of the making of this film is very just, you know it's inspiring you know it's like he didn't give up there's something in him to make this movie to make it happen but hell or high water he's gonna make it he's gonna complete it it's gonna be released and he did he had a billboard up for five years, which cost him five thousand dollars, I believe, every month. He paid a feeder to show the room for two weeks in Los Angeles, so it could be eligible for Academy Awards. And this was back in two thousand three. It didn't get nominated for anything. Or at the Academy, it did win some awards. How many got? few awards, like the best film in New York and this and that, so 
Not sure if that was a joke or if that was legit. I don't know, but he got some awards for that. Um, and this book, and, and this film, I mean, the film is what I'm talking about, you know. It's a great film, but the book is good, too. For a more accurate representation from Greg's point of view. Because the movie is very from his point of view. Uh, Dave and James are the lead actors. Seth Rogen's good in this. He's very, you know, he's serious. I mean, yeah, there are some things he'll say that you'll laugh, but it usually has to do with Tommy. It's like, what the... Like, at one point, he stares at the camera and delivers a line. He goes, what the... What are you looking at? It doesn't work if you're looking at the camera. Which is true. You're not supposed to look at the camera unless there's a scene where you Like, breaking the fourth wall, or... You look at the camera, because somebody's right in front of you and then it's like you're talking to the audience but there's someone there like the Silence of the Lambs when Clarice and Hannibal are talking they're looking at, into the camera so they're looking at each other and yet it's like they're looking into your soul particularly Hannibal he's like looking But he did that. He looked in the camera. He couldn't remember his lines. He was Tommy. He, you know. But. It's, it's a good movie. It's a good story. Very inspiring and influential, I believe. Um, and you get the sense of just never give up. I mean, whatever your dream is, do it until it's achieved. I mean, if Tommy Wiseau can do it when all the odds were against him, like me, I want to make movies. No reason I can't. Same with you. For whatever you want to do, no reason you can't. And, um, great film, good film. You know, at the end, you kind of feel bad for Tommy because of how everyone laughs. But then with words of encouragement from Greg, that's all fine. And... Yeah, it's, it's, it's good. And it, at the very end, even before the credits, it, they, they have a side-by-side -side of the disaster artist's version of room scenes and the actual room scenes, so you can see the comparisons. And that was just fun. It was fun, funny. It was, uh, James Franco, apparently, he recreated 25 minutes of the film. So, maybe on Blu-ray, DVD, we get to see those in its full extent. Not just the the film, like, they're making the movie, they're making the scene. And then you see what's at the very end. Hopefully we'll be able to see all of that realized. But that's really all I've got to say uh, this time. Good movie. I'd recommend it. So, yeah. It's out everywhere now. So, if you enjoy movies, you enjoy movies that uh, are about the making of movies, go see this. Um, it's kind of like it's been said, like, my generation's at wound. Um, and from what I've just heard, the, the room is essentially my generation's Rocky Horror Picture Show. So for better or for worse, I have my own Rocky Horror Picture Show, and I have my, my own version of uh, Ed Wood that I could see in my lifetime in the, on the big screen. So Yeah. That's it. Uh, thank you for watching, and Bye, Mark.